Today, of all days, I'm glad that this is not a video show. A modern podcast where Chris and Mike talk about TV, movies, superheroes, and everything in between. It's time for Superhero Slate! Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week we have our first look at Marvel's Defenders. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty good. Uh, the future of the Green Lantern films uh, is something yes. we're going to talk about as well. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there's an unannounced X-Men movie out of nowhere. Ooh. Still unannounced, though. So, And more. Mm. Yeah, and more. And unfortunately, you don't get tomorrow off, which sucks. Yeah. Well, if most people, yeah, it's okay. Um, I, I guess during December, I had three, four-day weekends in a row. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm okay getting this one back uh, since we got two off for, uh, I guess, New Year's. But, uh, yeah, you, you get tomorrow off. How are you going to spend your day, Mike? Man, I'm probably going to do a whole lot of nothing. Because that's usually how I indulge in my three-day weekends. Because the the older and older you get, I'm not saying I'm an old man, but You're once you man. start to add on the years, the less and less you want to do on the weekends. You just want to you just want to enjoy that you don't have any chores that you have to do, nothing that you have to fix, no sort of critical errand that you have to go run. So I'm enjoying that, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you if anybody out there is having a three day weekend, don't feel pressured to go do something. Yeah, you can always catch up on the backlog of superhero slate episodes. Yeah, wink, wink. or uh, or the backlog of Sherlock episodes. I think the third one is going to drop today. Today, today. the so, last I, one of this season is today. Yeah. Yeah, and I haven't I haven't watched any of them. The only the only thing I know uh, from uh, from the the wire is that the second episode is better than the first. That's all I know. I have no idea what content's in the episode. And then I think I saw, like, one blog title or one article headline somewhere that said this met, this could be the last season of Sherlock. I have no idea. But you can never really, you can never really determine that kind of stuff uh, with, like, the BBC because those shows can go on hiatus for, like, a decade and then come back. They're, like, never technically canceled or, you know, anything, well, so who knows. Well, actually, that I do know because the last – when they said that season four was coming, mm-hmm. that it was season four and season five were both confirmed by the BBC. Mm. So it's they've at good. least signed on to one more. So I don't know where you're getting your news sources, Mike, but they still <laughs> uh, I'm getting my news from random headlines scrolling through, like, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the high bar I, I give news myself. That's, that's fake news, Mike. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Um, so I I did not realize how I sound a little congested today. I'm here in, back on my end now. Uh, it's rainy here. It's rain. It's rained all week. Very damp. Like not enough to like be fun rain, but like kind of like it's cold and mm-hmm. like the moisture is just in the air. And you're like, why? I mean, just be cold in January or, or give me give me full wrong <laughs> rain. There's no happy ground. So I'm sorry I'm a little congested today. But Mike, you talk, you were talking about some some food adventure you had. I, I'm curious. I'm yeah, hungry. So Tell m- me more. It's it's not so much of an adventure. I was just oh. like uh, just before we started recording, um, I told you I'd be about 15 minutes because I was making myself some guacamole, and I was oh. like, this is this is shaped up to be a really good food weekend. Like. Um, uh, there's a uh, really popular burger place out in New York called Shake Shack, and Shake Shack was kind of like the East Coast In and Out, you know, because In and Out was out here on the West Coast. So uh, LA is, has been privileged enough to actually get its own Shake Shack. So it's like I have all the best of all the burgers here in one city. So I had some Shake Shack on Friday night, and then I had a repeat of Shake Shack again last night. So I had like a normal burger on Friday. They have like this fried chicken burger sandwich, and I had that last night. Uh, we went over to some friend's house last night, and they had like some snacks, and they had awesome snacks. They had like Funyuns out. Not only that, is they had this little tiny itty bitty crock pot of like nacho cheese. So I was like <laughs> dipping Funyuns inside like nacho cheese. It was delicious, and my wife made some awesome pancakes this morning, which were awesome. We're gonna be making some homemade pesto tonight. And I'm going to also eat some guacamole. So it's just been a solid food weekend. I've been eating good stuff. And I just, well, I just trying to put those good vibes out there in the world. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that sounds like a good thing to me. Uh, we had some uh, little hot dogs in uh, croissant rolls yesterday. Pigs in a blanket <laughs> pigs for, <and> pigs in... <laughs> for... For, for uh, the, if you understand the vernacular, I mean, but so that, that's what I had a lot of yesterday. A lot of junk food. Um, again, I, I went to a friend's birthday party uh, at, like at one o'clock or so, and they had, like his wife made all this great snacks, and I just snacked on a bunch of junk food all day, so... I, I I'm I'm jealous of your your burger choices <laughs> and and stuff out there, uh, so um, yeah, so I don't know. I, that's that's about it for me, Mike. Um, I, I I've got some news. I do you want? I know you haven't looked at this list. Yeah, I like, mean, usually I uh, usually I skim through the list to be the best uh, co-host I can to prepare for the show. But you know, sometimes like I like to be sidelined to be a little surprised. So this week. You're going to be laying it down in front of me just like we are the listeners, so this is going to yeah. be fun. So sometimes you're the worst co-host is what you're saying. <laughs> but it could be the best. Yeah, it could be. So I'm going to actually uh, crack open this this drink here I have, this beverage, <laughs> real quick. Um, Ooh, that's good audio. That's good tape. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, I, it's not an ecto-cooler. I know everyone wanted that sweet ecto-cooler sound, but <laughs> it, is, it is not. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, a, take a drink here. All right, all right. All right. All right. We're listening. We're listening. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, oh, that's okay. refreshing. Cold <laughs> well, what beverage. Is it? What are you? What are you drinking? It's just Mountain Dew. It's not uh. special. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's poured into a sifter, so I can, so I have a really fancy. Uh, uh, okay, a nice Dew decanter. Experience. Yeah, letting it, uh, letting it air out. You gotta smell it, it. You gotta smell it before you drink. <laughs> gotta release it. those dew tannins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man. Well, speaking of dew tannins, Mike, that, that's a great segue into our first uh, bit of news here. This movie, I know. Gar- I, I think that's an awful segue. <laughs> well, but, but this movie, Guardians, the Russian mm-hmm. Guardians movie that we've talked yeah. about for several months, the final trailers come out for this movie. This movie looks completely off the wall, completely bonkers, if you yeah, will. And and I I think we should catch some people up in case they have either forgotten about it or maybe haven't heard of it. This is basically like. The only blockbuster trailer movie I've ever seen come out of Russia. I'm sure they exist, but this is the only one that I think has ever gotten enough like attention to where it's it's kind of seeped out into uh, like English speaking countries. So it seems to be some sort of like uh, Avenger style group of uh, Russian themed superheroes. Like there's this there's this one guy that has like these curved blades. Yes, um, the Wind uh, Man I, is what yeah, he's called. And there's um, there's this uh, guy that's kind of like their Hulk variation where he's like half bear. But I guess in this trailer we get some new footage of he can go full bear. He, so yep. that, <laughs> he is called so, Wild Man and he is a werebear according to the <laughs> wiki. And he looks really badass. There's pretty iconic moments in the trailers we've seen where he's holding a big Gatling gun that's pretty badass. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's, an, an, there's another guy that I think he probably controls concrete maybe. I don't know if he's like, a, a, like an earthbender like from Avatar. If it's exactly. just Exactly concrete. It, but, exactly, um, he is land man. He controls like stone and soil and dust and rocks. Uh, and okay, stuff. but it's this weird mixture of just like um, kind of blockbuster feeling trailer, but it's all in a totally foreign land that we're not used to. But the characters seem to be really cool and thought out. But then you get these weird moments where you're just like the the um, the special effects just aren't quite up to par with what you'd see. So it's like top level cinematography mixed with like CG that's maybe a couple years too old. Mm-hmm. And so there's some there's a little conflict there. But either way, it looks really really weird and it looks fun at least you know it, it does look fun this isn't a superhero movie you're gonna sit down and take seriously like i said you have um a guy who looks like he can slow down time uh a guy who turns into a bear with a machine gun uh, <laughs> a guy who can like add rocks himself and the invisible the, the what she's called the water woman the invisible girl who can like turn into liquid and stuff like that yeah um uh, just a quick, quick look up. Is this is a five million dollar movie, but it man, <laughs> it looks better than some of the larger uh, budget movies we've seen, like in terms well, of story, at least. Well, I mean, since it's coming from a country like Russia, I'm really curious. Maybe if a lot of it is maybe funded from the government, so maybe that's not showing up on the budget. You know, uh, you know, a, a lot of the time. I'm not saying this is always the case, but a lot of the times when like these big movies come out of kind of uh, more oppressed countries. Usually the countries are doing their best to be like, hey, look, we can make movies too, America. We can make movies too, mm-hmm. Hollywood. So there could be a little of that going on. But either way, um, th- th- I think this is going to be a-, 
a, a thrilling adventure. Yeah, the, I mean, this trailer is, looks looks like you know something you rent. This is a red box movie. I don't know mm-hmm. if we'll get a theatrical release. If we get a theatrical release, Mike, I'll go see it. You know what? I will. I will put that down right now. <laughs> if Guardians hits here. The, the Russian Guardians, not Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I will go see it in theaters, and it comes out February twenty third in Russia, and there's already a sequel planned. So. Um, they're, I guess they're they're ready for it, man. They're they're having fun with this. Well, I mean, I'm down to see more of that bear guy. So, <laughs> if I don't get around to seeing it, I want to. But at least if I get to see him in trailers, I'm okay yeah. with that. All right, well, we'll we'll plan that out. Uh, see see what we can do for you. But that brings us into our next art. This next topic is actually Guardians of the Galaxy. I got gotcha. you. You thought we didn't have any Guardians news, but they really are really Guardians news. Um, apparently we had our first look at the villain of the movie, uh, her name is Aisha, uh, and, um, it's a, it's on a toy form, so I don't know, uh, you know, what else this reveals other than she's blonde, has angry eyes, and a blue suit, but... And, and, and what, what is this, uh, what is this, what were those toys? We were discussing this last week. It's not a pop vinyl, it's like a borb or a zorb or what? Well, are... It's like a, it's, there's dorbs. And this dorbs, is like that's right. In the style of the dorbs, but it's more mm-hmm. of a keychain. I think these are keychains, like pint-sized ones, itty-bitty ones. So. so do we know she's the villain, or are we just assuming she's the villain because she's got the angry eyebrows and the frowny J- face? So James Gunn did say that she is the villain. So okay. um, that's why the only reason this is news is because James Gunn actually commented on it and said, "Yes, this is Aisha, the villain of the film, who is the leader of a uh, a genetically perfect race of, I guess, aliens, people in space. I don't know what they're gonna look like." Oh, man, that must be annoying for to making like a multi million dollar movie and then uh, a little screenshot of a toy comes out and basically blowing your load of who the villain's going to be in the movie. That must suck. Yeah, at least the first look at her. Uh, so mm-hmm. um, there's still no sign of um, uh, the dad, uh, Ego, the living planet. Nothing yet of him. So uh, no, no Kurt Russell on the radar yet. No, not even not even in toy form. They're playing him close to the chest. So, uh, do you think you think he'll be in the next trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy? I think they would be. It would be shocking to not get his face in some uh, some aspect of the trailer, just because he's he's super famous. I mean, he's a super uh. famous guy, especially since he's kind of resurfaced in the Fast and the Furious movies. So that's a big face. You got to throw him in a trailer. Um, a Guardians Guardian news is always really fun because uh, the the cosmic universe of Marvel I'm just very unfamiliar with, especially when it comes to Guardians. So yeah, you can tell me this villain's gonna be Aisha, but like yeah. I don't I, nothing that, that that tells me nothing. So it's kind of fun. It's almost like I'm seeing an original IP because they haven't really mixed in any of the the Earthbound heroes yet. So it's almost like I'm getting like a, a somewhat of a an, an an original story to my eyes. So that's pretty fun. So. So, um, uh, but I think that'll make it even more cool when they end up mixing with the Earthbound heroes because it's like, oh, kind of almost bringing two franchises together. Mm-hmm. So either way, um, you can't be disappointed when you hear about Guardians of the Galaxy, at least not yet. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think that my guess, as as we're so infamously wrong on trailer release dates, um, <laughs> I'm going to go either Super Bowl mm-hmm. or Logan release. Well, I mean, I had an idea... Um, the other week is just let us guess when the trailer is going to be and just try to find the exact opposite reasoning. And that's probably when the trailer is going to come out. Okay. So if, like if we think it's going to come out Super Bowl, like we got to think what's the opposite of Super Bowl. It's probably just going to be like a low key, like release Valentine's like day. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's day has to be the opposite. But yeah. The only, the only thing that's unfortunate about getting a brand new trailer during the Super Bowl is we you know you're not going to get like a two to three minute trailer. You're going to get like a 30 second spot, hopefully with some new footage in it. So uh, there's not a whole lot to go off of, uh, but we'll see. We did a we did like a two parter Super Bowl um, spoiler cast last year where we kind of split the episode up in half, recorded one day, then the next day to kind of run down the trailers and I think even maybe the commercials. So we'll see if anything comes down the wire. Um, uh-huh. but uh, it, we'll have to see what what news we start to get coming Super Bowl. But that'll be soon. I mean, that's uh, coming up next month. So yeah, I mean, I, there's apparently some sports ball things going on today. Uh, some I guess they're called playoffs. Uh, <laughs> so uh, as as we get closer, we'll we'll definitely keep you posted because I mean companies are, have got to buy those spots early, and uh, they, they're usually released. So we'll we'll keep you posted on, on what's supposedly coming out with the Super Bowl as well. Uh-huh. 
on that uh, regard, Guardians has a video game coming out later this year as well, and we have uh, some details on it that was kind of released here. Uh, I'll let you guys read it. It's you know about the same team, Star Lord, Gamora, Drax, Rocket, Groot. Um, you know, discovering an artifact of unspeakable power, and each one of them wants to get this relic, as does a an enemy who's you know probably powerful. So uh, the in- interesting part about this is it says it takes place from Earth to the Milano to nowhere and beyond. So um, Guardians on Earth in this is very interesting in this video game. I don't think it's canon with the, the cinematic universe, but uh, might be a very very fun story and, and game to play. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the cool thing now is Telltale has such a pedigree with the games that they've made now. I think kind of when they get the when they get the opportunity to work with an IP, usually they trust the development company pretty well. Because, I mean, they've made awesome Walking Dead games, Game of Thrones games. I, I, I think they either came out with a Batman one or it is coming out. It's so out. I yeah, think, it's, it's yeah. done. I think basically they let them do whatever they want to do. So that's cool. So maybe the kind of the first time we get to see these versions of the Guardians go to Earth might be this game. So that's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... Um... I haven't played any of the Telltale games, to be honest, but I this one definitely has my uh, interest, so I'm going to gonna keep watching that as we get closer. Uh, speaking of the cosmic side of Marvel, and this may be cosmic for now in the comic books and maybe not so much later, but Marvels and Humans got some interesting uh, information on casting this week, Mike. Um, oh, okay. So the production is going to start in LA and Chicago this March. So if you come across any inhumans out there in LA, you know you got to tell me, right? <laughs> I, I will I will keep an eye out for sure. So that that's cool that we're starting to get some news out of this because this almost seems like a weird mixture of like kind of theatrical release, kind of TV release. So I, I'm I'm curious to see what you have here. Yeah, so I mean the I guess the most interesting thing is most people assume it would be in either LA or like Georgia. Or like Atlanta, where most of Marvel stuff is filmed, but I think those are mm-hmm. booked up, as we talked about last week with the Runaways and um, uh, the Cloak and Dagger show. So, yeah, well, at least recently, LA has been doing um, a lot better job giving tax credits to people that want to film out here in LA. So uh, it's based off a lottery type system. So I think uh, all of those things are starting to pay off. So uh, it could be good having them back out here in LA. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'll be in Chicago in April for C2E2. So maybe if they're still filming, I'll see if I can sneak on set and get get like be in there, like with, <laughs> with the show. Uh, like I said, I've got a face for radio, so you'll definitely know me when I'm when I'm out there. <laughs> but that's not the only thing here. Like I said, the casting calls are out, and they've used code names for the characters to mm-hmm. as as is tradition to not give away the characters they are using. However, I'm I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, I'm going to leave them in the notes. But something very interesting here is each one of these characters, um, it gives a, a male age range of name. The beginning letter of each name is the character they're going to play. Oh, so you think so? The, the Broderick is Black Bolt. Uh, 34, Caucasian, can say volumes with just a look. Duh. Oh, uh, you know yeah, I see what you're saying. Marjorie is Medusa, uh, mm-hmm. elegant advisor to her husband. Marty Male, Broderick's younger brother, is uh, Maximus the Mad. Kevin, in Male 34, open side of build. His mind is the greatest asset. That's Karnak. Uh, mm-hmm. one, of, one of my favorite characters right now, by the way. Grady uh, is impetuous and brash. He's Gorgon. Uh, he's got goat legs, but he's like a warrior. So, kind of looks like a, one of the, a centaur thing, kind of thing. So, there's that. Christine, female, is uh, uh, Crystal. Uh, who can control the elements. And lastly, Timothy, um, SFXMU, which stands for special effects, uh, like, required for this uh-huh. character. And that would be Triton. He's a fish. He looks like a fish. He's, he, when he transformed, he became, like, a fish creature. He has to live in water. Uh-huh. So, so, so um, I think I think if we're getting any sort of uh, news out of this casting, we're kind of getting concrete evidence here that uh, we're going to be getting kind of that royal family vibe in this TV show. 
And for the longest time, this was planned for the big screen with an Inhumans movie. So, you know, I think we've kind of gotten no strong confirmation whether that movie still exists, but it definitely seems like they're not pulling any punches for the TV show. They're like, mm-hmm. this is going to be a big TV show. So I wonder if any of this casting is going to be like familiar faces, you know, a lot. Right. I think most I think most of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are all people I have never seen before except for Coulson. So I wonder if the, maybe they're going to go kind of maybe more well known for maybe at least Black Bolt, who's going to kind of be the leader of all these guys. I so, would say um, Black Bolt or uh, Maximus, who's most likely the villain. Uh, his brother mm-hmm. is usually trying to to take over. Um, but I don't know. Agents of Shield uh, Agent May is actually the voice of Mulan, and she played Chun Li in the not so well received Street Fighter movie. <laughs> if you remember that, uh, and I think what was it? Um, one of the one of the uh, Bobby Mockingbird. She was actually a Wonder Woman in a pilot that didn't get picked up as well. Well, uh, and she was also in a Friday Night Lights. But to be fair, she yeah. did pop up later in the show. Right. I think, what yeah. was it season two? So I think with this core cast, I, I think it would be helpful if uh, one of them was a familiar face. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, most most TV casting, I, I, I it's getting it's been getting a little better throughout the years, but it's just always just very pretty people because they're like, oh, everybody's got to be really pretty because we're going to be looking at them every week, you know, 20, you know, 23 times every, you know, uh-huh. in a year. So I'm hoping we get some like unique casting here, but this is exciting. Yeah. It's cool to kind of see that, you know, we're all we are going to mm-hmm. see Black Bolt. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, I think the, the biggest takeaway for you, it, this strikes me as the 1990s and humans uh, miniseries. So mm-hmm. if anyone's interested in maybe learning about it, read that, and that might help you guide what's going on there. In the TV realm as well, uh, Marvel is not pulling any punches this year, Mike, like you said. None at all. The Defenders, we got our first image of the team together from Entertainment Weekly. I know how you feel about these images, Mike. They don't do you justice for the featured image. <laughs> How do you feel looking at this cartoony, old time comic-y cover of the the Entertainment Weekly with the Defenders on it? What's your I mean, first thought? It's, it's just uh, it's just really cool seeing them all together. It's kind of like the uh, the fruits uh, of their labor are finally mm-hmm. uh, paying off. They're ready to pick. Everything's ripe, ready to go. Um, it, it is kind of weird seeing them all together with Danny Rand, just because we haven't had a chance to connect with that character yet. So um, I don't really know, like, is he supposed to be looking kind of like a brooding? Like, uh, we have some other, like, behind-the-scenes shots where um, I don't know if this is kind of like an off-the-cuff uh, shot where it's supposed to be funny, but it yeah. looks like uh, Iron Fist is just showing off his nipple. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's, like, more trying to show off a tattoo or his chest or what's going on here, but um, – I don't know. This is really. I mean, it, like, like I said last week, this is one of my most anticipated things of the year. So, um, I, I'm kind of curious who the kind of what the villain is going to be because that's kind of what we don't know yet. I think it's going to be somewhere in the realm of like the hand, you know, some sort of mystical option because mm-hmm. I think Stick is going to be heavily involved. But it, it's rad seeing all these guys together. It definitely is. And then as you kind of, if you go through our show notes, we have images of each character, and each one is lit by like their kind of color scheme. Uh, even from like their their co- costumes from the comics, mostly, uh, mm-hmm. especially Jessica Jones because she never wore her pink and blue costume, but they used the lights to kind of give off that vibe that she had from from that, mm-hmm. that costume. So uh, it's really cool to see all these. And and you're right, we don't know Iron Fist yet, but um, your your theory about the hand being kind of involved it feels good because they say Iron Fist is the one taking this seriously. He's the one who wants to bring everyone together and he sees this levity in the situation like this is real we can't be stubborn and you know daredevil can't go work by himself luke cage can't go do his thing and and us win because they'll beat us so uh iron fist definitely is going to bring a lot to the table really excited for that and two months from uh this tuesday all right so except for that and uh, then we also yeah go ahead well i was gonna say it makes me think maybe at the end of iron fist first season it's going to be kind of maybe a soft ending you know we've kind of had some uh more concrete endings to these first seasons of these other characters but it seems like iron fist might kind of segue into the defenders pretty seamlessly so um if it so if he's going to be i hope he doesn't end up being in charge like I, my money is on a uh, daredevil being the leader of the group mm-hmm. um Kind of uh, historically in the past, Luke Cage has usually been out in front. So um, I'm curious to see how the dynamics of the team are going to play out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I definitely don't know um, since I've never seen this 
grouped together in the comic books. Um, <laughs> so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how that plays off. And the Luke Cage and Iron Fist, uh, I guess, are dynamic because they they do have their own they have their own comic series for a long time called Heroes for Hire. So where they work together. Um, but we do get a look at the villain, as you mentioned, uh, Ale- uh, is Sigourney Weaver's character Alexandra. We only know her first name. We don't know anything else about her. Uh, Marvel Search doesn't give us anything to go off of, sadly. So um, we just know she's an Alexandra, and she is very the smartest person in the room. Was the description they they gave her. So I, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't know. I honestly don't know, Mike. Any <laughs> thoughts? Any thoughts on this before? No, I, I mean Sigourney Weaver is awesome. I love it when uh, these kind of TV shows get a little bit of extra star power behind them. So Sigourney Weaver looks awesome. I mean, that's an awesome photo we have of her. Uh, I like the idea that she's really smart and intelligent. Maybe she's out thinking all of our heroes. So I, I'm all on board. I mean, like you, no one has to convince me anymore about the defenders. So mm-hmm. yeah, Mike, Mike sold. He he's already <laughs> bought his quote unquote tickets to Netflix to watch yeah, exactly. the show. <laughs> so uh, did you reserve your seats though? That's the question. <laughs> well, I mean, I got a couch that's perfectly acceptable for my butt. There, you, there we go. It's even got his own like butt print in it already, ready to go. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about this earlier a little bit. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, came back. Uh, the season 4, part 2, came back uh, earlier this week. I don't know if you were able to catch it or not. Um, yeah, I saw the I saw the uh, the mid-season premiere. The premiere. Um, and I, honestly, I enjoyed it. I think, uh, just not, I'm not going to give any details away, but it feels very good at post-Westworld last year. So <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Feels very good for that. And, but the ABC, the chief, uh, I don't have his name offhand, is very confident in a season five happening of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. Oh, so I, I guess maybe that 10 p.m. time slot didn't hinder them too much. I mm-hmm. guess, I don't know how much it's working in their favor, but if it's not hurting them, I guess that's good. So yeah, it would be kind of weird if maybe Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. disappeared just before we were about to get inhuman. So it seems like something that would run concur- concurrently next to each other. So, I mean, I'm fine with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. keeping going. I mean, yeah. they seem to kind of are backing down a little bit from really trying to integrate themselves with the cinematic universe. I mean, they kind of like uh, roll with uh, roll with the punches when something really uh, filters down to their world. But they're kind of doing their own thing. It's working out pretty well. You know, adding in... Adding in Ghost Rider, I mean, they didn't need mm-hmm. the cinematic universe to invent Ghost Rider for them to use it, so I like that. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, if it ends when Infinity War starts, that's okay, too. I mean, five seasons is a great run for a TV show that started off on pretty wobbly legs. <laughs> yes, to, very honorable. To be to be honest. And um, if you're listening to this on Monday or Tuesday before 10 p.m., um, Pat and Oswald will be returning, I think, on this episode or the next episode. As the Koenig uh, brothers. <laughs> our little cloned man. Yeah, so we're going to find out. Is he an LMD? That was always the theory. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll see. And then Avengers Infinity War, like we just mentioned, we've got a new casting announcement for this movie with Peter Dinklage in talks for a very important role, Mike. Ooh, I love me some Peter Dinklage. Yes, we don't know what that role is, but there are three, three of them I feel confident in saying. And okay. I'm going to see if you know any of them. Uh, first off is the character Pip the Troll. No idea, but you did send a picture earlier this week, so I'm familiar with what Pip the Troll looks like now. Yeah, he's a very short man. He's he essentially looks like a little troll dude, but he he palled around with Adam Warlock um, oh. and Thanos uh, in like the '90s in the Infinity War, Infinity Watch era of stuff. So that so, fits. That fits. That fits cosmically at, le- at least. Yes, so um, if he's like a little minion of, of Thanos, that could be something. I, I don't know, but that was my first thought. Um, and then not to be a, a sizist, if you will, um, another character could be the Watcher. Marvel's the Watcher. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, I, I, I like I'm looking at these last two names. You know, you got the Watcher here, and also uh, not to bury the lead, I guess anymore, Modok. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think I like the idea of, of the Watcher. He's always been a really cool character. He's very imposing when he's when he shows up on a page, you know, because he's just there to watch. You know, he's like a, kind of like a scientist uh, looking at wildlife, you know, trying not to interfere, just wants to see what's going on. So, uh, but I, when you're saying sizes, I think uh, just the way uh, the Watcher is just kind of drawn seems like it. I, I think he's a very actually large character, though. Yeah, he's got well, he's a very like alien looking. 
looking very slender body, very large bulbous head. Mm-hmm. Um, they'd but, have to and then, figure out what they want to do with him. Yeah, and then we got Modok here on the end where I feel like people have been theorizing who could possibly be Modok for years now and if Modok will indeed show up at some point in time. I mean, Modok to me seems more like a CG character, honestly. It seems like uh-huh. anybody c- could embody Modok. Uh, so it makes me think, oh, well, why waste like a uh, Peter Dinklage talent, you know, when we don't even really get to see him? So I like the idea of him being the Watcher. You know, it seems like um, uh, James Gunn is kind of going this route of where these big celestial type characters don't necessarily have to be exactly what they thought they were. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Kurt Russell is going to be playing Ego, basically like a planet, I mean, he obviously doesn't have to be a freaking planet. It seems it can be embodied in a person. So I kind of like the idea of uh, Peter Dinklage just kind of like walking around, showing up, not really saying much. Maybe his eyes glow. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, my, my money would be on the Watcher if I had to guess. No, that's cool. Uh, the only reason I want to throw Moda out here is because the writer of um, uh, Winter Soldier, Civil War, and the upcoming Infinity movies, um, uh-huh. Christopher Marcus, actually said he loves Modok and he would will he will win you over to Peter Dinklage as Modok exactly uh-huh. in 2011 uh, oh, okay. before he even had any fingers like really in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. So I just thought that reference was kind of cool that he said that. No, I mean that, that's. Movie. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty telling. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, you could always do the thing that they do with the Hulk where you just kind of, like, superimpose, like, the geometry of the face on the character. So, um, I don't know. uh, I mean, Pip the Troll seems to fit cosmically, but, I mean, it seems to be kind of a a small role for such a a popular actor right now. But it's cool. I like that. I like Dinklage is in talks. Yeah, exactly. That's that's new actors in this. That's great. Um, it's a great steal from X Men, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about Sherlock earlier. Benedict Cumberbatch is a popular man. He's all over the place. Everybody, oh yeah, wants some cucumber batch or whatever <laughs> you want to call him. And apparently, he has a stand-in for Infinity War in the initial filming stages because of his busy schedule. Um, I mean, it was it was bound to happen. I mean, when you're making a movie like Infinity War with that many moving parts i mean it's ridiculous to think that you're going to have all of these actors available at the same time i can't even imagine the scheduling nightmare that they have over there i'm sure like the the producers got their work cut out for them trying to make sure all these parts are moving and trying to keep the directors happy having like i gotta make a movie where are my actors so um i'm not surprised i hope that doesn't hurt the film at, at, you know there's so much there's being there's so much being built up to these infinity war movies it's actually a little nerve-wracking you know sometimes on the podcast i talk about it's uh almost um a way off my shoulders when i get to go see a movie that's not tied into a franchise or i'm not bought into so much because i feel like i can just like casually watch the movie but like when i go to these big franchises like marvel i feel like there's just so much i'm taking in there's like so much history when it comes to the comic books and the movies and what's going to come afterwards so i mean now they're they've been they've been decade there's been like a whole decade leading up to these movies so this is going to be it's going to be intense man yeah by the time it hits it will have been a decade uh surprisingly um Mm -hmm. but they will film his scenes with this uh the stand-in and but they will go back and refilm Cumberbatch when he's free and his dialogue that they need later as well. So, but they're not going to CGI his face over this actor. So yeah, if that's good. Could, it'll be in the background, out of focus, over his shoulder. So, um, I, I mean, that sounds like the best way to do it, right? No need to, no need to continue with the CGI uh, actor replacements in movies. As man, technology is crazy, man. You don't even have to be there to be in the movie. <laughs> yeah, Snapchat can make you somebody else. Like, yeah, there you it, go. If, Sna- if Snapchat can do it, <laughs> everybody can do it. Yep. Um, so uh, some interesting uh, information from the actress who plays Gamora. I can't think of her name off the top of my head. She's in Star Trek. It's it, it's it's all right. I'll, I'll let it. I'll let. Thank it, you. Let thank it you. I needed that. Um, so Gamora and the Guardians will return slash appear in Infinity War as well. And James Gunn has been upped as a producer on this in the capacity probably to oversee the Guardians characters and make sure they're used like they are and these new writers aren't just adding characters into their own whims that don't line yeah. up with how they were before yeah and one of those would be uh zoe saldana so Th- there we go thank <laughs> in you in case thank we you. forgot who gamora was going to be so it's it's all good uh yeah we we were talking um 
just between the two of us early, earlier this week about uh, you know James Gunn having a bigger role when it comes to the Marvel Universe, just because it seems like if you can uh, knock out a really good movie on the on the Marvel side of things, is they'll they'll trust you and they'll bring you into these other films. So. Um, uh, it, it's not always necessarily a good thing. You seem to be not a, a really worried at all. I I, I would have a little um, a little worry uh, over my head just because they 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 put a lot on top of uh, Joss Whedon's shoulders when it came to Age of Ultron. So and I'm not saying he crumbled under the pressure necessarily, but he had a he had a lot of moving parts to fit into that uh, really middle of the road movie since, you know, a lot of movies after it, a lot of movies before it. So I'm hoping maybe that doesn't end up happening to James Gunn. Well, I mean, Joss Whedon was a director. James Gunn is just a producer on this. So yeah, if for, anything, for now, wor- I mean, they could but, be giving him a, uh, you know, a new movie, but, but your worry should be more in fact on the Russo brothers who are doing their third movie. Well, uh, I, 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 I think they got the numbers. I think that it, 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 it's actually really uh, fortunate that they found two people that work really well together and are also directors. So I feel like maybe they can d- do like a maybe a divide and conquer type deal. I mean, they're literally dividing the movies in half. There's two directors for both movies. So I think that might work out a little bit better in their favor. It almost yeah. might be a necessity. Maybe Hollywood's really going to be looking out for directing pairs when it comes to these big mm. franchise movies. But um, I'm a little less worried there. But uh, James Gunn kind of, I'm not saying went from nothing to like a big megastar because he the stuff he was doing before Guardians was really cool. But now he's like got these like huge budgets, these top tier, super famous actors. Um, I just hope he keeps making good stuff. That's all I hope so. Yeah, I mean, him as producer in this, I think more people you have making sure all the characters line up means you're not going to have off char- characters that are out of place by the time the movie comes around. More, you think he's just you think he's just looking at dailies, just saying like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like okay, this is the Guardians. This is how Star Lord would react in this situation, kind of. Uh-huh. Deal. Um, other than that, I, I'm not worried. Sure, he he does great work. I trust him, so yeah. that's why I'm all not right. worried. Um, yeah. Another bit of interesting news popped up this week was that Liv Tyler could be returning in Infinity War from her Incredible Hulk role. Oh, I bet she is stoked. <laughs> I mean, we always say you want to get on that Marvel money, so I I assume that she would be very happy to get folded back into the universe. Yeah, there was a lot of controversy around the Incredible Hulk when it came out, uh, mostly with Edward Norton and you know how the movie was and creatively and whatever. But they brought back uh, Thunderbolt Ross in uh, Civil War, her dad, mm-hmm. and with... Banner technically gone off planet in Thor Ragnarok. Why would they? They might need her to come back around in Infinity War for some Hulk reason. Uh, Maybe I don't know. the The love stories in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have just not really been that good. And most of the time, when they start to get developed, they just unfortunately just get forgotten. I would think Pepper Potts and uh, Tony Stark were the most developed, just you know, over three movies. And she was her own like kind of badass type of character. Even though I didn't like Iron Man three that much, she still had some cool badass parts in the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, Gwyneth Paltrow is basically out of this movie franchise. Um, as far as I can remember, so I don't even know if she'll ever be coming back. Um, you know, we got Thor's love interest, Natalie Portman. She's gone, but maybe coming back. So, I mean, I'm not saying these movies need to have a love story, but it's just like if they're not going to go anywhere, just leave them out, you know? <laughs> I don't I don't know if it needs a love story necessarily, but I don't like the Black Widow Hulk dynamic. Oh, no, that's the worst. <laughs> so if she comes back and is the, you know, the new way to calm the Hulk down or whatever or get mm-hmm. him to do something or maybe she is a victim. And that you know what? I don't want the Hulk calm down. I want him wrecking shit all the time. Then, then she's the victim. Calm down. She's the victim of Thanos, and uh, or maybe the Hulk hold or Thanos holds her prisoner for the Hulk. I don't know. If she comes back, I'm not too worried about it. So, I think it'd be cool that she did. To be honest, so that's where I sit. Ant Man right. and the Wasp, another movie that I forgot was even happening to be honest <laughs> there's so many coming out uh rumored to start filming in june which makes sense because it comes out a year later i think in june yeah. or july of 2018 so yeah we'll get some more paul rudd on our plate you know yeah. we we enjoyed it we enjoyed ant-man um uh, you know it was pretty heavily based on the heist aspect so i'm curious uh where they'll move the movie to you know i don't know if it'll be more action based maybe they'll do another heist again uh-huh. i mean sometimes it works i mean all those ocean movies are all based on heists and i'm a sucker for heists so um but yeah looking out for that one yeah knock on wood again my theory is maybe if there's two avengers movies um a year apart thanos has controlled the, the world for one year or that whole year while those other movies come out and like that's where they have to come back and 
beat him in the next Avengers, so maybe they're doing stuff under the radar while Thanos is ruling Earth. Yeah, so Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. We're going to shift gears. We're going into DC territory. Buckle in. We're going in to Wonder Woman. The villain has been confirmed as Ares, the god of war. All right, cool. Um, I think uh, it's being played by Danny Houston. Uh, he's one of the Striders in one of the X-Men films. I think it was the Origins Wolverine one, the really bad one. That's why I can't uh-huh. remember him very well. Um, <laughs> and Ares also is one of the strongest Olympians uh, next to Hercules because he gets his power from all the conflict going on in the world. Like, the more war there is, the more powerful he is. Well, I mean, it's not going to get more conf- conflicting than, you know, <laughs> World War One. so... Uh, I'm sure he's going to be pretty strong. Yeah, so he will be the villain um, in that he's also playable in the, uh, d- the what is the DC fighting game? I cannot think of. Injustice. Is there it we go. Injustice? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, if you want some Ares background, I guess go watch and go play Injustice. But other than that, uh, he was actually in the very first Wonder Woman comic book, I'm pretty sure. So uh, he's been around for a while. Aquaman has a little bit of news as well, um, and it starts filming in four to five months per uh, the guy playing Aquaman, Jason Momoa. So, uh, I don't have any bad ill will towards Aquaman, do you? I mean, I mean, not yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't have any bad will towards any of these uh, Warner Brothers movies until I went and saw them, so... Uh, I guess my hopes for an Aquaman movie is I want to see um, Atlantis. I want to see like so, I don't. I hope it just. I hope Atlantis just looks really, really freaking cool. I just hope it's just not like all dark and Zack Snydery and just like tones of just like gray and just sad and droopy and mopey. Like give me like some sort of like cool, really awesome, vibrant Atlantis where I f- where we really feel like we're being transformed into another world, and I I would be pretty happy with that. So um, uh-huh. I assume. An Aquaman movie would mainly take place down in the ocean, so it's got to look awesome. Yeah, knock on wood. And um, with uh, the the other actor who played Night Owl as Black Black Mana, I think uh, the villain. I'm really excited about that as well. Um, are you familiar with the uh, the James one, the director? He did Furious Seven. I don't know if you watched that one. Uh, Furious Seven was the last one, right? The most yeah. recent one. Uh, 2015. So. Probably unless they do one a year. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they all those mo- all those movies blend together. But yeah. is he directing it? Yeah, he's a director, and he's known for his horror films like The Conjuring, Insidious, mm-hmm. Death Sentence. So um, this could be a Doctor Strange kind of scenario where we have a horror director taking over uh, a superhero franchise. Well, like we, we had we something about. kind of similar happen. Well, not horror wise, but we had a Fast and Furious director give us a pretty good uh, Jurassic Park movie. You know, mm-hmm. Jurassic World. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried about the director. No, not at all. I think uh, the reshuffling in DC is going to give us better films. So I'm excited about yeah. that. Um, some more news on the Batman. We we seem like we talk about this every week because there's, there's so much back and forth, so much hype for the Batman. Mike, they they really, <laughs> everyone wants a piece of the Batman. They want to know what's going on. And mm-hmm. um, apparently the filming has been pushed back several months, uh, and Ben Affleck's been quoted as saying he's really excited, there's great stuff in it now, and it just needs to get better and better. Oh, I mean, that, I mean, like, I, I went on kind of a, a whole rant last week where um, I'm glad he has, like, just some sense of quality. He has a... I mean, he's a, he's a filmmaker. I mean, he's a director. He makes awesome movies. So just because he's got a comic book character in front of him doesn't mean he's just gonna uh, succumb to uh, just cheap tricks. So that's good. I mean, who knows when it's gonna happen? Uh, it seems like these big franchise movies really need to rely on their schedules. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if maybe Warner Brothers is kind of like freaking out, like, "Come on, Ben, we get, this movie's got to come out in this time frame, <laughs> or Marvel's gonna drop a movie in there and we're gonna lose again." So. Um, I, I, I mean, theoretically, this could be possibly maybe um, the best Batman movie since The Dark Knight. You know, it's been a while. So um, I'm looking excited. <laughs> well, thankfully, there hasn't been too many in between here and there uh, since The Dark Knight. But yeah, I mean, I think there's Ben Affleck has a new movie that just came out this week, I believe, or is coming out soon. I now, don't Live remember. by Night, I think is what it's called. It's like a gangster yeah. movie. Live by Night, which I think he wrote and directed and. Uh, there was an interview where like most of his questions that he's getting on this tour are for the Batman rather than <laughs> the actual movie. And uh, he did say he was directing it kind of thing. And he's like, it's just such a pain in the ass from all the people asking me questions all the time. <laughs> so uh, I, I totally feel you. 
Another surprise news drop we had this week was some Green Lantern Corps news, Mike. Some confirmations Man. here. All right. So the Green Lantern Corps movie will focus on Hal Jordan and John Stewart. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen Hal Jordan before in the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie, and what is described as a lethal weapon in space story premise. All right. I mean, it, we we kind of got the lethal weapon back and forth nature in Iron Man three. Um, I mean, the movie didn't work for me, but, you know, the back and forth banter of, like, two buddies is always a good combination. If you had a chance to see the nice guys last year, uh, that mm-hmm. that was really fun seeing uh, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe kind of buddy around. So, yeah, the buddy-buddy um, lethal weapon uh, description is always good when you hear in a movie. I just hope it, I just hope it pans out well. I, th- I, yeah. I think you told me about this little next bit of news coming up here. So, uh, yeah. And it makes me a little worried. <laughs> so, the next bit of news, like, it's 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 a very conflicting emotion here with uh, David S. Goyer and Justin Rhodes writing. And Justin Rhodes is new. I don't think he has anything much under his belt. But David S. Goyer is known recently for his Batman v Superman <laughs> Donald Justice writing credits. Damn it. Damn it, Goyer. See, so, <sighs> Goyer, I don't, I, I don't want to judge the guy. Just because it's not always the writer's, you know, fault. You know, sometimes uh-huh. it's the way the director interprets the script. You know, that's you know that's a whole different thing. You know, who knows? You could read these screenplays and they could be great. Um, you know, he is responsible for the best Batman movie ever, The Dark Knight. You know, with Heath Ledger, Christian uh-huh. Bale it was an awesome movie. But he also wrote the other Batman movies that surrounded. It. I mean, Batman Begins was good, but you know, it went from good to awesome to not so good. Um, and then it got really bad with Batman vs Superman. I think he also might be credited for uh, Man of Steel too. He, you know, he is the writer of Man of Steel, and if yeah. you go back a little farther, he's got you know he actually did Blade and Blade Two, which I think are really good. You know, yeah, it's just Super- it's just weird. He he's definitely seemed to be pinned as the superhero screenwriter guy. Mm-hmm. So he's got a lot of he's got a lot of experience. I'm curious if you if he likes to do it i mean obviously it's paying his bills so he's not too mad about that but i wonder if maybe he wants to branch out and do other stuff maybe he really likes writing these comic book scripts and gets a lot of joy out of it and he's pissed off that Zack snyder keeps making this garbage uh but i'm I, I i mean obviously i can't i can't not look at his name attached to a green lantern movie and not feel a little nervous yeah so i think you know he has a lot of dark and gritty underground work by night movie credits to his name here um, you know, Blade and, and Batman, they, they operate in the same scenarios, you know, in the shadows. Uh, I think Green Lantern Corps might be something different and maybe more to his advantage. Uh, you know, get him writing outside of what he's normally used to. I'll give him a little credit there. Uh, a couple things. He is the writer and creator of the upcoming Krypton TV series that's still in development that we're like, we don't know if we even want. Who wants this? I, and, and we're actually not 100% sure anymore if it's a TV series or a TV movie. Uh, because I think if you check on IMDb right now, it's kind of credited as a TV movie. So who knows what's going on there. But, I mean, Goyer, you got a, a, an impressive amount of superhero <laughs> stuff under your belt. I just need something good to come out. <laughs> yeah, I wish we could we could get like a, an average uh, rating of his IMDb uh, stuff. Uh, and see what well, I mean, this this will be, I guess, a fun experiment because yeah. we know Zack Snyder is not going to be directing uh, Green Lantern more mm-hmm. than likely. I would just assume he's not going to. So if we got Goyer teamed up with a new director, maybe that'll work out really, really well. You know? and, and he's got, that's his only movie next after Batman v Superman. So he's got some time to work on it with a partner rather than, you know, by himself. So hopefully uh, we, we see something good. I'm, I'm, I'm remaining optimistic. Cautiously optimistic on Green Lantern. Cool. All right. So it's one of my favorite DC properties. Another out of the blue news, I guess, piece of scoop that we have here is a film called X Men Supernova. Yeah, crickets. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, like that's what. That's I mean, exactly like, what, how I what feel. Is that? <laughs> so we don't know what it is. It popped up on a um, uh, film production sheet for this year in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, they're filming. Not only are they filming X Men New Mutants, that's labeled separately. X Men Supernova was labeled right beside it. I and mean, this is this is throwing a stick into my theory of them sticking to New Mut- New Mutants and Deadpool. So I don't know what this is. <laughs> so um, it starts filming in May 2017, and the working title has been updated as of this morning to Dark Phoenix. Mm. So I guess I mean. Are, are they bringing all those kids back from Apocalypse? I mean, 
I mean, I'm not shocked if they do, just because I figured they probably all had pretty um, hefty contracts for a franchise coming up. But I, Fox just really uh, assumed it was going to do a lot better than it actually did. Um, I mean, we always seem to be getting some sort of Phoenix shoved into our X-Men movies. It hasn't been working. So I don't know. Do I want this? I, I can't tell you. No one, no one's asking for this, Mike. To be honest, I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. Fox isn't even asking for this. They probably accidentally signed a contract saying we have to make another one. Um, so, based on previous co- comments by the writer and producer Simon Kinberg of the last several X Men movies, um, mm-hmm. the uh, Brian Singer is not expected to return. This should take place in the 1990s, and he's been working on the script kind of under the radar for several <sighs> since since the other one. So. This should be. I mean, that, that just makes me mad because they're they're doing that bullshit of skipping decades again. How mm-hmm. I mean, we can't just believe that these characters have aged thirty years and like you know basically three years. I don't care what makeup effects or CG that they're gonna throw on them. It's just not believable anymore. Uh, and then I just want them to reboot all these characters. I want a fresh start in like six or seven years, or may, maybe even maybe close to a decade. You know, just stretch out those. Um, those releases a little bit for Deadpool and New Mutants and just give me something fresh and new and just breathe new life into the X-Men universe the way you're supposed to without these weird back and forth time travel excuses, you know, and because they're going to have to recast Wolverine at some point in time. And it's, I think when they do that, they need to recast everybody and get it all fresh. So, uh, yeah, this is not what I would do, but I'm obviously not a studio executive, so. Yeah, um, we, yeah, nope, we, there's nothing good to say about this at this point uh-huh. in time. Other than the fact, hey, let's hope we're wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, n- no news is good news, but we'll... Yeah, I mean, we've seen other scheduled X-Men movies pop up and then then drop away, so... Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, exactly. And what bothers me most is this next thing. The X-Men TV series is still coming along, right? A, a production from um, Fox and Marvel working together mm-hmm. to do an X-Men TV series. Not Legion. This is, this is set in the X-Men universe, and... To fe- it's said to feature familiar characters, but they are the the producers were saying this week they you know, we know the timelines don't match up, but we're not here to really explain that. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's why it's you guys just, suck. Yeah, I mean it's just all confusing, and convoluted. I mean this was the best part about you know having these characters out in the open and and really making this connected universe and franchises that it all made sense. I mean even Agents of Shield, you know, they do their best to fit within the continuity, you know, they're not making excuses for not fitting in. Um, what the hell's going on Fox? I mean it's unfortunate because more than likely uh, if this doesn't come out on the Fox's normal, you know, channel, this would maybe come to FX like Legion is, and FX has a really high pedigree for television, so it could end up being a very, very good show. But would it be kind of spoiled a little bit just because it's just in this weird, convoluted universe that doesn't make any sense anymore? So that's why I'm still holding true to just give me, give me a reboot and like. I don't know, 2022 or something like that. Well, stop treating us like we're stupid. I mean, (laughs) comic book fans aren't stupid. Your normal viewers aren't stupid either. They're like, what the hell's going on here? Like, just figure it all out. Start fresh and just kick everybody else out. Get some new people in there. Go with it. Hire us. We'll do it. We'll figure it out for you. Yeah, we'll pair up and be directors. That's right. We'll divide and conquer this this (laughs) X-Men, the X-Men problems. We'll, We'll take care of it. However, one movie on the X-Men radar that has me excited, like I said, is Logan. And yes. it is premiering at the 20, 2017 Berlin Film Festival, which I'm kind of impressed with. I wouldn't... They've not taken any other X-Men movie there, so... Mm-hmm. Um, to put it in a film festival, I feel like the director is proud of his work and might have something good here. Um, but a new so- the synopsis was revealed as well, with just uh, two sentences... In the near future, a weary Logan cares for an alien Professor X in a hideout on the Mexican border, but Logan's attempts to hide from the world and his legacy are upended when a young mutant arrives being pursued by dark forces. I mean, it just that, sounds it. awesome because it yeah. seems like a really a really contained storyline. It doesn't seem like we're going to be globe trotting around the world, you know, going to pyramids and shit. Uh, it seems like it's just going to take place like in the Southwest. It's just going to be an awesome adventure with good characters. So, I mean... This could be the last, I mean, this could be the last time we see Logan uh, for a long, long time. Um, so I hope he goes out in style. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Really, really happy it's getting some, uh, I guess, 
a, a different uh, exposure than just a regular superhero movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talked about characters and movies that pop up and disappear. Gambit <laughs> is one of those films. Oh, man, I can't believe we have Gambit news. Yeah, well, the X-Men producer, uh, Lauren Schuler Donner, confirms Channing Tatum is still attached to Gambit. Just in case anyone was worried, DC was going to steal him for their Shazam movie. So, just in case the lawyers that wrote up his contract says he can't run away quite yet. So, yeah. I don't think I don't think this movie's getting made. I don't either. And if it does, it's not going to be anything we wanted. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. That's yeah. What was that movie supposed to come out in October last year or something like yeah, that? Yeah, October of last year. Maybe he's the X Men Supernova. That's his movie. <laughs> I don't even know yeah, if they have a director. Th- yeah, just throw that Phoenix Force into Gambit. <laughs> yeah, we're, we don't even care anymore, guys. Here's your X-Men movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, because Deadpool 2 is, is coming, and it's bringing back some familiar characters with mm-hmm. Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Cool. I don't know if they need yeah. to come back, but if they want I to, mean, then it works. It's, it's a good combo. We kind of had the straight man... Uh, in the form of Colossus, you know, in the do-gooder, we had Negasonic Teenage Warhead, which kind of uh, paired a little bit with uh, Deadpool's darker side. But uh, I guess the good news here is we're getting a sequel even without that Golden Globe Award. So Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, the problem is I hope they don't rehash a lot on the first one because they're also bringing back our favorite taxi driver, Dopinder. Oh, yeah. So I hope it's not like a bunch of rehash of the first one. It worked yeah, once. I, I let's mean, do it again. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ryan Reynolds, I saw him on the, you know, I saw him pop up on my TV on the red carpet for the Golden, Golden Globes. You know, he was talking about how he's very he's very passionate about Deadpool. He's very protective. So I don't, I, I trust him when it comes to uh, shepherding this movie because obviously Fox is going to put so much on the shoulders of Deadpool when it comes to holding up their superhero franchises. So um, ho- I hope Ryan Reynolds just does his best to keep it small. You got to keep Deadpool small. You got to keep him funny. So, um, you know, if we're bringing back these guys, I, I you know, I hope it still happens. Yeah. Uh, it exactly. was funny when they were in it. <laughs> no, exactly. They're they're great. They're, it's a great film. Um, also, the writers of the movie have said that this will eventually lead into an X Force film, kind of confirming X Force is in the horizon for more Fox mm-hmm. movies that Mike is definitely dying for over there. <laughs> um, but that's not the purpose of it. Deadpool two. Um, so this isn't supposed to be a middle ground to, to X-Force, but we will know what X-Force is probably by the end of it. Okay. I mean, that's the only X stuff I'm looking forward to is uh, X-Force, Deadpool, and New Mutants. So oh. I'm going to keep my eye on, on that stuff. And Legion, too. Legion looks awesome. Yeah, Legion does look fun. We're only a month away from that. I'm really excited to see that on FX. All right, Star Wars news, Mike. All right. All right. This might clinch your butthole a little bit. But oh no! Okay, <laughs> Lucasfilm and Disney are in talks to use Carrie Fisher's likeness for future films. Okay. Uh, um, okay. All right. But Disney <laughs> has gone out and said officially, commenting on rumors, unlike they've ever done before, that they are not going to CGI recreate Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Well, official. I think that that's good to know. So I guess that means they're gonna. I guess they're gonna find a way to edit her story. Maybe pare it down. Like I'm just really confused. Like if if you're if they're not going to use her CG likeness, um, I'm just curious how they're going to organically remove her from the story of the next Star Wars movie because obviously she's not going to be in that last one. You know, number nine. So I don't know. I I just hope it doesn't weigh down too much. Uh, you know, when I went and saw The Dark Knight, you know, obviously every time you see like Heath Ledger's Joker on the screen, you're just like, oh man, Heath Ledger died. That sucks. Um, so I hope that doesn't keep popping up in my head every time I see uh, Carrie Fisher um, in the next Star Wars movie. I just hope I can enjoy the movie and then just be happy that we got just one more awesome performance out of Carrie Fisher. So, yeah, I think her cropping up in CG form in a, in a ninth movie would just be really weird. So yeah. I'm glad they're not going to do that. Yeah, they definitely said they're not doing that. Um, they may be able to, I guess, I mean, there's still 11 months before episode 9 or 8 comes out. They could mm-hmm. definitely use... Some you know alternate takes, extra footage they have of from that movie, um, and maybe make something at the end of it, like an homage or or find a way to shepherd her off. I don't know. We don't know what the capacity is, but I trust Disney and Lucasfilm to do it right. Like, yeah, I mean, it seems like they came to a conclusion relatively quickly. I think we were talking about uh, them kind of coming together to decide what they were going to do. Maybe a week 
maybe like a week ago, last week, yeah. maybe two weeks. So, I mean, if they're already coming out and saying officially that they're not going to be CGing her face onto anything, uh, it seems like they, they, they jumped on what they're going to do pretty quickly. So uh, I guess that's good. Maybe they had a really clear idea. Or maybe, or maybe we're being, maybe we need to be a little bit more cynical. Maybe when a big movie uh, franchise and a big studio like Disney uh, starts making properties with older characters, maybe they just always have a contingency plan in case they die. Because, I mean, like, after Harrison Ford was almost out of the movie for, like, what, breaking his ankle or something like that, maybe they're mm-hmm. just like, oh, crap, that's right, all these people are old, we might, we could lose them at any moment, so, um, and also he's fucking plashing, crashing planes, too, so, I don't know, maybe they've always had a contingency plan for all of these people. Yeah, I mean, uh, who knows, um, I know they had, uh, on Carrie Fisher, a an insurance policy against the actors, the older actors, mm-hmm. um, so in case they did die, like, you know, like, they have a way to, I don't know what the, I don't know how actors, probably just money, but uh, they did take out insurance policies on some of the actors. So uh, we'll definitely see what, because of, probably because Harrison Ford about off himself <laughs> on the Millennium Falcon. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, um, but Disney, Lucasfilm, they're very, I, I think they're very respectable um, corporations. I think they'll definitely do an honor to all the fans and people out there. So they have to, they have to. Yeah. Cars 3 got a full kind of trailer that came out this week as well. Um, we saw the teaser a couple weeks ago. Very dramatic teaser, by the way. Mm-hmm. And this kind of picks up where it's left off. I, I find it interesting. They don't really show the main character. Um, I can't even think of his name. I don't care for Cars too much. Uh, <laughs> but they don't show the main character's face and like him talking like as like a yeah. normal movie very often. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll I speak out in defense for the first Cars movie, because that's the only Cars movies I've seen. And I liked it. I enjoyed it. I like the kind of unique world that they built of, like, you know, uh, cars, machines, and stuff that were, you know, alive. It was kind of, You know, it's unique kind of see, like, oh, like like little forklifts are the ones that mm-hmm. kind of t- take care of the cars. They're the mechanics. I, you know, I liked it. Um, then I never saw the second one just because it just seemed like a really weird, wacky adventure, which really wasn't what I was looking for. And obviously, once I saw all the reviews that came out for it, I didn't need to see it. But this one seems to be, I guess, maybe going back to the roots of like racing. And uh, it seems to be bringing in maybe some of technology that we're seeing in the real world. It seems like maybe his adversary is possibly an electric car. Maybe just because when you see it driving around the track and the trailer, you don't really hear the thunderous roar of gasoline. You kind of hear the zip zip. And Pixar is located up in Silicon Valley, you know, where all that driverless car Google technology is going on. So, um yeah, I mean, I hope it's I hope it's good. I mean, Pixar has had a rough time with sequels, uh, maybe not financially speaking, but critically speaking. So uh, it's a cool trailer. They seem to be cognizant of the idea that their mm-hmm. last Cars movie sucked, so they're trying to make it a little bit cooler. You know? Yeah, I, I said the um, I, I think the animation like clarity is is come increased on the Cars franchise at least. I mean, of course, it's, it makes sense because we're farther along. So I think I think it looks good and it does seem to take itself like this is a real movie. This isn't like there's no Mater, like no Larry the Cable Guy out there. Well, at like, least not in this trailer. I think yeah. he I think he's in the movie. Yeah, but he's not out there doing goofy things in Europe like the last movie trailer. Was <laughs> and I'm like oh. not being a secret spy. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, this is okay. I, I mean, it's all right. We we just have to get through all these other Pixar movies till we get The Incredibles too. So uh, <laughs> just swallow it and go with it, Mike. Yeah. Another sequel on the horizon um, we don't know much about yet is Pacific Rim Uprising. Um, Ooh, and, to, and to bury the lead a little bit, like I said, I didn't look at this news, but obviously since we got to this bullet point in our in our notes here, I am so excited what I just read. It, I'm so happy. So just l- lay it on the audience. Carl Urban is joining oh, the cast of yes. Pacific Rim Uprising. Carl Urban, also known as Bones in the Star Trek movies and the new ones. He's also Dread in that awesome mm-hmm. killer Dread movie that I hope one day we see a sequel to and, in, some, in some aspect. And he's Scourge in the upcoming Thor movie we're very excited about as well. So. Oh, yeah. Carl Urban's Carl Urban's just awesome. Like I, don't, I, like, I don't know what it is about him. He's got kind of this, like... He's got this like, charisma to him, but you know, not the same charisma as like you'd see in like The Rock or something like that. He's kind of he just seems like a really cool like dude. He's kind of like a cool badass. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit maybe of like kind of like a James Dean vibe a little bit, but Carl Urban is just fucking cool. So. Like like from from <laughs> Doom to Lord of the Rings, that guy puts his heart in everything he does, and you can yeah, always exactly. see exactly. So and we all know how excited I am for uh, Pacific Rim too. So him joining mm-hmm. that, oh, I'm stoked. 
That's right. And the actress Rico Kikuchi is returning. She was the um, the partner in the Jaeger to the main guy yes. in the first one. I can't think now, of the character's I, name. I would give huge props to the sequel if they don't have her fall in love with anybody. Because I think that was kind of the refreshing part at the very end of the movie when they're on that raft together just waiting to come get picked up after they basically save the world and you all think they're about to kiss but then they just like kind of hug and they look out to the horizon like looking optimistic for like doing a good job so I'm just like that was awesome so I really hope that carries through you know talking again on this episode about you know shoehorned love stories so don't mm-hmm. shoehorn her into a love story she can fall in love with Carl Urban that's fine well, well, well maybe Carl Urban falls in love with her because she's a badass or there's also John Boyega. What if John Boyega and Carl Urban fall in love, Mike? <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's a bromance I'd watch. I'd yeah. watch that bromance. And Big Metal Robots as well. <laughs> um, do you Have you ever seen the show Twin Peaks? Um, I have never seen it, but I am familiar that it is a, it is a cult classic of a show that I believe got canceled too soon or something like that it got canceled in some aspect that you know people were upset and it's coming back somehow yeah so it's two seasons started i think in the 91 1991 era mm-hmm. and it had a, a, a made for tv movie as well like afterwards that's like a prequel tv show um done by uh um david lynch and this starled kyle mclaughlin from agents of shield fame he was uh daisy's dad and mm-hmm. in the show, the premiere for the next season, this is is upon us with May twenty second on Showtime or May twenty first on Showtime with an eighteen episode order. Most of them were thinking ten episodes, eight to ten, eighteen episodes launching this May. I mean, I guess Showtime's trying to be a little different. I mean, I didn't I, since I'm not familiar with the show, I didn't know what network it was dropping on. So if mm-hmm. you would have said like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon, I wouldn't have been surprised. But now Showtime's in the game of kind of rebooting stuff and bringing it back to life. So, I mean, that that's cool. I mean, I don't know. You like Twin Peaks, right? Yeah, d- Twin Peaks is definitely um, a show I watch, and it's weird. Like, it's not for the average viewer. Like, um, it, it's it's supernatural and mystery and so on and so forth it's definitely one that's like what's 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 really happening here but it's it draws you in and i was like mm-hmm. okay i can watch this and there's 30 episodes and the first two seasons combined and then they're calling this one a min like a limited series even though it has more episodes i think than like one of the seasons did the other one i'm like it's called it season three right. uh, <laughs> but i think it was in the last episode um of the the series in 1992 or 1993 um they said that we will one of the characters said i will see you in 25 years <laughs> and it is 25 years since that ended and wow. it's like really even creepier all around well i i guess that i guess that worked out well in their favor yeah so uh, the fact they called it was kind of <laughs> mind boggling didn't you know, really work for district 9 but <laughs> yeah no definitely didn't so, uh, yeah, so that's Twin Peaks. I'm excited. A uh, friend of the show, one of the hosts, Luke Baker, he's a big fan of the show. He actually got me into it, so that's why I want to bring that up. But um, I guess that's it for the show, Mike. We're a little longer than usual, but, man, we had a lot of notes this week to go over. Like it's Yeah, I mean, I'm glad we kind of ended the show there with that little Carl Urban news because that made me really excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'll try to find something good to end on from now on in this 2017, the news year. Yes, the news year. The news year. So... Mike, I didn't know you were drawing pillows lately. Um, <laughs> well, pi- pillows, they're, they're technically supposed to be flower sacks, but I think when you're thinking of the old classic kind of flower sack, it pretty much looks like a pillow. So I didn't know you were doing this, but it is fantastic. They look awesome. Well, thank you. Can people can people take a look at those somewhere? Uh, yeah, they can follow me, Mike Royer, on Instagram and Twitter at Mike Royer Design, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. And I will not take credit for those uh, flower sacks. It's an exercise I found out of this really awesome book that these two Disney animators published. So it's, you know, you draw these like flower sacks in all these different positions to learn, like, kind of like uh, the line of action and, the, and swinging the weight around, you know, because they're full of flowers. So they got like flower bellies. So you got to see where that moves around. So yeah, you can look for that stuff. But uh, Chris, I know you've, you're like deep 
into the drone world now, so uh, I'm still I'm still <laughs> waiting for some aerial drone footage. So if I'm waiting, where where should I be waiting at? Well, um, sadly, because of this rain and moisture, I'm not about to take up this very expensive piece of equipment into the air <laughs> yet. But you can find me on Twitter at Valdan V A L D A N. Uh, post stuff on there. Um, uh, as soon as I do get a clip, though, I will take it. I'm actually in the interim while well, it's learning how to do video coloring, like color correction. Ooh, there uh, you go. Get some DaVinci going. It's actually I'm actually that. using DaVinci Resolve. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm learning on that uh, to color that, that aerial footage when I get it back. In, nice. And it's full 4K. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, read stuff I post on Comic UI and the film side chats. We are looking to record a next episode next week on all the uh, upcoming award seasons of films, awesome. and the histories, and what each one kind of means. And uh, sweet, we're excited to pick that back up and and go into like maybe a once a month, once twice a month kind of format on that to because there's so much going on, man. We got a lot. Like, oh oof. yeah, it's a big year. It's a big year. I love it. Love it so much. Now, if people are listening to us, maybe on iTunes, maybe on YouTube, maybe somewhere else, where else can they find us? We're, we're all over the place, Mike. I don't even know anymore. You got a list here. <laughs> well, as always, you can always visit uh, SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we post the show. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Tumblr. You can subscribe and get us right in your e- email inbox, and you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as of recently, you can follow us on Instagram yes. at Superhero Slate Podcast. So we'll be posting some cool stuff up there, uh, hopefully uh, on a daily, maybe bi-daily basis. I'm not 100% sure. We, we do new. it whenever we're, we're, we kind of <laughs> just split it down in the middle. Hey, this is cool. Post it. All yeah. right, cool. Well, yeah, we'll, fi- we'll figure it out. It's, a yeah. no- it's an ongoing thing. But, you know, if you're a fan of the show, please consider leaving us a review, uh, a comment. Uh, just react to wherever you're uh, uh, listening to the show. We really appreciate that. If you're a super fan of the show, you can just share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy. And we will be here every week to run down the latest news. And if you want to sport some merch, you can head on over to our uh, T Public store. You can find mm-hmm. that link on our website. And you can pick up a Superhero Slate shirt. Oh man, that's a week. We're we're adding all this new stuff to this uh, to this ending uh, kind of credit thing that I gotta I gotta work on my flow. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if if you can get it down to one breath by next week, I'll be impressed, Mike. Yeah, I will, I'll no. be impressed too. No, <laughs> I think maybe we'll just get like you remember the old talk boys. We'll just get one good recording and just have you replay that <laughs> over the microphone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're you're the audio editor here. Why are you making me do this every week? <laughs> um, well, I because I like hearing you, Mike. I like hearing you just, live. You just want to be authentic. That's all. It's true. So, all right. Well, um, that's it for this week, guys. Mike, thanks for doing that. Thanks for being here. And we'll catch you guys next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm also taping in front of a live audience. Two studio cats.